Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We have Michael Sandler and he is talking about all the automatic writing experience. We are in part two. In the first part, he was talking about the automatic writing experience, um, a, a, something that he's been doing over the last six years and how he's refined it and, ta and taken everything he's learned and put it in this beautiful book. Um, and in the last segment, we were talking about when we when you described this as an attunement, when you're attuning to um, this higher wisdom that all of us have access to. Um, you described that initially that you were like, is this my ego? Who am I contacting? So I wanted to talk like, how do we know when we're writing if we're just talking to ourselves um, and how do we know that, you know, I know in shamanism, they have like certain um, uh, litmus tests on whether you're talking to maybe a wayward spirit that is not there to help you. So how do you, how do you know those things? Well, first off, let's, let's, I'm going to address them in reverse order. Okay. Because we're doing what I call an intention prayer in the beginning, uh, enveloping us in a bubble of love and light. We could also call it a protection prayer. It helps you connect only the highest level spirits who are truly in the light. So I've almost never heard of a challenge with the exception if somebody has uh, substantial bipolar challenges or manic challenges or schizophrenia challenges. Not the thing to do really until you're cleared by the doctor because it's really hard to discern at that point. Other than that doesn't seem to be any real challenges, but there are many litmus tests we can use. Mm -hmm. One, are you getting shoulda, woulda, coulda, or should it all over? Right. If so, <laughs> Michael, <laughs> that was should did. That's your ego. Right. That's not your higher self because your higher self, spirit, angels, guides, is going to feel lighter is going to feel more joyous, is not going to have that heaviness to it. And we can literally put the wheel, uh, put the words on like the scale of justice. Does it feel light? Does it feel heavy? Does it feel kind and loving? Does it feel judgmental? Mm. And these are very easy, simple ways to tell. Mm. Now, specifically, like a difference between journaling and automatic writing, journaling is an I, me, my process. I did this. I feel that. I, 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 captain. Mm -hmm. That's journaling. Automatic writing is you are loved, dear one. Mm -hmm. Everything is okay, mm -hmm. dear one. Or everything is okay, love. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. spoken to from a second person perspective. Mm -hmm. Lastly. You can literally go in, and I've seen this successful 100% of the time, because when you use automatic writing for the really heavy decisions, before you're well into it, you're going to get your ego coming up. And the, even for myself, on the really heaviest stuff, there's been one time recently where it was ego, and I did my, I did my litmus test, and it failed. Hmm. I said, is this ego? <laughs> And oh, I so literally you literally ask out. yourself, is this I ego? Literally asked, is this ego? I go, yes. Because <laughs> because I was going, I was we're, we're we're purchasing this beautiful truck and RV and 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 all of a sudden there were way more uh decision points than I expected. Mm. And I'm like, um, do I get the white truck? No. Do I get the gold truck? No. Do I get no truck? No. Do I get any truck? No. Do I get uh 10 trucks? No. Do I get no trucks? No. And I'm getting all of these answers that made no sense. Uh, you know, is this my ego? Yes. Ah, uh, interesting. So you almost could tell by like if there's kind of it goes this way, that way. That's one of that's how you knew. And I also like how you just ask, is this my ego? And and at least what I've been told in my transmission work is that it cannot lie. Like if you say, are you? It has to tell you the truth. And it's like. Yeah, I, I am your ego. It's, it cannot lie. Every single time. Busted, <laughs> guilty. And, and then you have a choice. There's some ego exercises you can do, and you can work with ego, or you can say, let's call it good for now. <laughs> and so the question is, is when you do have, you know, when you do have those kind of wayward, you know, it's, it's a, you know, maybe you couldn't get grounded and focused enough. Um, is it best to just discontinue doing the onomic writing experience or like take a break? What would you recommend if you're like, I'm not getting anything or it's just mm, not working for me? 
take a break or do it another day. To me, there's no such thing as a bad automatic writing session because it's all an attunement. It's all helping you vibrate at that higher level. But if we put attachment onto it, it sounded like the concept of technically there's no such thing as a bad meditation. Any time on the cushion is good right. if you don't attach to the outcome. Right. Or you can freak yourself out. Oh, that was such a terrible meditation. Ideas were coming. Maybe that was actually exactly what you needed. But the, since this is a practice, we can either call it good for the day, which is probably what I'd recommend, or if we need to, come back later in the day after you've gotten yourself more grounded. And because what I teach in automatic writing is to do it first thing in the morning or last thing at night when the rest of the world is sleeping. I'm pretty sure that session that I had was more of a midday thing when we're plugged into the field of worry and concern of everyone around us, which you can do after you get good at it, but come back to it a different time of the day when the rest of the world is quiet. Uh, okay, so the question of when, when um, that you address in the book is, you know, early afternoon, it's really, an, and you have several different sections in your book talking about distractions, where they be electronic distractions, human distractions via your pets, animals, um, roosters for people who own those, um, children. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm only joking, Michael. For those who don't know me, has two cat, three cats, a rooster, three cats and a rooster. Yes. Okay, so whether it's that, so, and, your and lovely wife Jessica. And before my rooster time, <laughs> God bless daylight saving time. <laughs> he gets about a minute before five thirty now, which was four thirty, <laughs> which gives me an hour, hour and a half to write. Beforehand, I had to like frantically go at it because he was going to be up at 4 30. So that's the time that you do it and at night because that may be actually the most quiet time in your house. See, for me if I woke up if I did it at night I'd fall asleep it'd be it would just be kind of a draggy kind of experience so I assume it just depends on whether you're a night person or a morning person and um, which is the better and what have you found through talking to your clients and people who've gone through the process? majority benefit by doing it in the morning because you attune you get to that higher vibrational state which carries you throughout the entire day mm -hmm. now for night owls no pun intended or people who are st stuck working at night or our shift workers and and all my love in the world because they do the most important work uh then do it at night but then reread it first thing in the morning when you get up mm -hmm. so i call it an automatic writing sandwich if you write in the morning, you're attuned throughout the day. You start to fade by evening. Reread it before you go to sleep. You get to a higher vibrational state, fall asleep in that state. If you write it in the evening, you're good throughout your evening hours or your sleeping hours, and then read it again in the morning to attune you for the daytime mm -hmm. hours. I, I would say that um, I've just started the process of um, writing something in the morning. Literally, I wake up out of bed and I force myself to gently but i'm like don't leave just stay here don't go anywhere and go through you know i go through a concentration practice which is equivalent very similar to your 10 breathing practice and um and i do a shamanic journey and process which is very similar to um your process which is talking about going through getting your um theta brain entrainment and it, as part of that process i usually in my actual, before I do concentration practice, I do, I set the intention of what I am trying to do, which is awaken. And then I, which is very similar to a prayer. And then I ask for protection, guidance, love, connection, remove obfuscate, you know, obfuscate, obscurations. Um, please give me all the resources I need in order to do this well. And then um, I, uh, I basically, uh, I then say, please, um, at other times, if this is not the right time, please enter things into my mind stream when it's appropriate. It. Meaning that the sleep could be my time. Like it's, if I can't get to it for whatever reason at that moment and it needs to percolate, please put it in my mind stream. 
And then um, I imagine like my um, retinue is in the Buddhist, they call it the retinue. I imagine just a field of Buddha surrounding and smiling and wow. and being happy. So that's kind of my my um, version of, of what, you know, a prayer, an invocation, um, a meditation. I do my shamanic journey, which has a beat that gets you into the theta brain state. Um, so I had, and I call them my retinue. So it's a very, um, similar process and I do it in the morning and, um, what I am amazed and what I just started doing, um, was I start reading the stuff that I got in the evening and in the morning, sometimes I get things What I'm finding is so curious is I get things in the morning and they make no sense to me. You know, they're talking about relationships, be careful about you know, something about your relationships, you may have some hardships. And I'm like, I have no idea what this is talking about. I'm trying to interpret it. And then I have an argument with my husband later on that day. I'm like, oh, this is, and then I'll reread no. it and go, ah, <laughs> I was, so what, what I needed to know, someone was trying to actually help me get that. And I didn't actually get it. So there's somehow, it's just hearing it in the morning and then the sam experiencing it during the day. I love it. And then the evening of going, aha, it's the whole um, adage of like, don't try to make an outcome. Don't have a certain expectation. Just let it be there and it will be there. Not in any, maybe not in any way in which you expected. So true. <laughs> um, any other things about... Um, in just terms of the technical pieces, um, where to write. Like I, I do it, I have all sorts of different places. I don't have a standard place, sadly, but where, where do you have a standard place and what do you recommend or find that successful? A lot of different places work. It, it is what feels best to you. I was rereading the book again for, for the audio book yesterday, and my favorite still is... We don't have it anymore. Jessica's ratty old college chair, which completely fell apart on me doing automatic writing. But I just melt into that chair, eyes closed. I, I would do a typing version, which is kind of an advanced version, typing along, eyes closed, almost looking like Stevie Wonder. Maybe he was channeling when he would when do music, I would assume so. I'm just swinging back and forth and grooving to it. Now we got, we got some version of that chair in here, which is kind of a retreat center out of Joshua Tree, and then Jessica stole it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you now no longer have your wear. Your wear is like no longer available. Well, she, she stole the nice chair. So I, <laughs> I'm just on a dining room chair, which is absolutely fine. I have a couple places that I can write. But with practice, you can get in anywhere. The wear no longer. In the beginning, it's sacred. It's important. But you could put me now. So I, I channeled Florence Scovel Shin this morning. I'll probably channel yeah. her a little bit more this afternoon and then teach a class. On, on her teachings tonight. Let's say we're an hour or two before class. The rooster is crowing in the house. Jessica's trying to get something ready. I've got music. He's now into nursery rhymes or other kids' music. <laughs> He's got kids blaring on the... He actually, this animal loves his music. And so he's, he's, he's focused on the music. Um, there's like road runners queuing up at the door, which there are right now too. And I could go just sit at my work desk and put on my Theta Brain and Train music, close my eyes, and it's there. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, it, it's yeah. Just ready to go. I think one of the things that's lovely about the fact that you've done this for six years, and, you know, both you and I have studied about neurobiology. I mean, we basically, you set a pattern. Like, I drive down the road every single time. It looks like this. And irrespective of whether, um, like, you're sitting in Jessica's chair, which she's now taken away from you, your dining room chair, or you're like out in your car <laughs> because Boo Boo is there. <laughs> like you've learned, you know, the music, boom, can like entrain your brain to be in that, like you're talking about that higher vibrational field that I literally do this anywhere. I mean, sometimes like if I were waiting in the car and I'm like, oh, I get a message or sometimes I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm looking at the moon and I get a message. And so I type the message for the moon. I mean, it can, you start learning to, it's a state of mind, I guess. And so the music is certainly a way to attune to it or like snap to. So your brain, the neurobiology, boom, kicks in right away. My husband says just, 
the hand on the paper, it's just like there's some way in which that kind of kicks things off. Um, um, any other thoughts about the um, typing versus writing, the kind of book um, in terms of where to place all this stuff? So we'll geek out for a minute. So okay. certainly to begin with for that first, I'd say month or so, unless you have a learning disability um, or some other challenge, I would start writing over typing because like your husband says, there's a feel to it. It's touchy feely, it's kinesthetic, and you're literally turning thoughts into things. You're taking a thought and it becomes ink on a page. Mm -hmm. And there's something really cool to that. And, and I find particularly in the beginning for people that writing... Um, it taps into your deeper wisdom more mm. easily. Mm. And particularly, I mean, typing, if you think about it, you're in go mode, you're working, you're checking email, mm. you're things like that. It's not really that different channel. So it can be a little bit more challenging. For myself, I had an undiagnosed learning disability growing up, dyslexia. Mm -hmm. I reverse letters, I reverse words, I'll reverse everything that you can possibly reverse. Mm -hmm. So I can't keep up with the guides. Mm. And so... If I write over time, it became really frustrating. And so I went to the keyboard. Uh... But I have on an app called Just Get Flux. It's free, justgetflux.com. And I put it in this thing called darkroom mode where only black and red light comes off of the computer screen so I'm not stimulated. So it's very different than the computer I use during daytime hours. And I do it with my eyes almost completely closed, which actually helps me get into that deeper state. Mm. Now, I want to talk about dragons for a minute. Okay. <laughs> Jessica's journal, my wife's journal, has dragons carved onto the cover. Mm. Dragon. <laughs> How cool of is Of course it that? does. <laughs> you get some sort of a journal, if you can, that has meaning, that has feeling, that has texture, that, that you can run your fingers over it, that means something special and sacred to you. Sort of like this is your Harry Potter spells. And right. you're gonna open this up, get a pen also that feels really special to you. I'm not a big materialist, although I, I like what I like, but I don't like to consume lots of stuff. But in this case, get something if you can that means something important to you because that has a resonant frequency or energy to it too. And then find a sacred place, sacred space to write. It could be, this is real world. So it could be um, going into the kitchen to write. It could be going into the bathroom to write. It could be going in a closet to write or under your stairs to write or the, the, the car in the garage to write. Or if necessary, even your car out on the street to find a quiet space. Now that's a hard one because there are people walking by perhaps but find a sacred zone to go in and make this ritual each and every day. Go to the same place at the same time, which makes it easier to step down into that sacred place. Love it. Okay, so we've talked about the who we're communicating, what it is that you're doing, how to do it, where to do it when to do it so in the next step um, in the next segment i really want to talk to you about like common questions because this is a new thing for everyone so i want to talk a little bit about kind of the experiences people have initially and like some common q a and um, we've been talking to michael sandler a dear friend of mine and author of this book ah the automatic writing experience Woo <laughs> thank you michael